Hi there! Today we have a very special video. Two wonderful CVT coaches moved from San Francisco and Los Angeles to St. Petersburg. We had huge two days master classes. We learned many new things and techniques. And we want to discuss it a little bit now. So, Russ Kennedy and Katerina Brown, they found time to answer some of our vocal questions. It's a very great opportunity. Uh, thank you very much for this, uh, so we can ask some vocal questions. Many uh, Russian singers and Russian voice teachers have very a lot of things a lot of different thoughts about distortion mm. and uh, some singers think that they shouldn't take it if they care about this about their voices health some singers make it and it's so uh, chaotic it's so uh, misconceptional uh, uh, and i want to ask you First, it's a very uh, red question in Russia, it's a very painful question in Russia, because we all want to use it, but we want to save our voices. You have such a big experience in it so many years, and how do you manage it? And uh, maybe you can uh, share with us some thoughts for people who want to start to take uh, distortion for their voices. Uh, what should they know about firstly? Well, um, thank you for having us here. It, it's really a pleasure to be in Russia and to speak with you and especially to be working with Kater, Katerina Brown. She invited me to come to, to Russia. This is my first time visiting and I'm really glad that it was under these circumstances with Katerina and especially here in St. Petersburg. Uh, I've, I've grown to really it's fall in love with the city. It's the best place to start Observe Russia. No it's kidding. It's the best city to start. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, distortion is, is misunderstood, certainly, by a lot of singers, a lot of vocal coaches. Um, the thing about singing in general is that if you approach using the voice in a way that's out of line with the mechanics, that's off point in terms of how the voice works, if you're not e adhering to the rules of what makes the voice function freely and naturally, you're going to hurt yourself. And that would be true with any sound. Uh, John Mayer had to yeah, have Mayer. vocal surgery and uh, he is perhaps the most lightest singer in yeah, pop yeah. around. And uh, even though he never hardly uses effects, he's not what you might call an extreme singer. Yeah. But then why was it that he was he uses the, air. He uses air. A lot of air. <clears throat> a lot of air. And if you're not using air correctly, just as if you're not working with volumes correctly, just as if you're not working in various uh, dynamics correctly, then you can hurt your voice. If, on the other hand, you're using the right approach, uh, where you're approaching uh, what you're doing uh, in accordance with how the voice functions, you can make any sound. You can sing loud, work with air, you can use distortion, you can sing high in the range with a lot of volume, and if you've got the techniques that provide those outcomes in a way where you're approaching it with skill, then you will not hurt your voice, and that's true for any effect, whether it's air, distortion, rattle, whatever it might be. So what's going on is that people just aren't um, aware of what to do. All they need then is to get the right information as to how to approach anything. I work with ENTs, doctors, speech pathologists, and a number of them specialize on uh, singers. Uh, these are like voice doctors. Uh, they do vocal surgery. They're the doctors that specialize on voice care. And they work uh, these guys that I'm specifically referring to work mainly with singers, so they're specialists as the voice pertains to singers. And they work with all kinds of singers from every style. Rock, country, bluegrass, world music, uh, hard rock, uh, blues, R&B, mm -hmm. jazz. And you would be amazed so that if I were to ask you, out of all of those genres, 
which of those genres do these doctors see the most harm being created in mm -hmm. the voice? What would you imagine would be the genre where the singers that they see are mostly coming from? Maybe distortion, belting, or drive. So some like kind like of rock or R&B, right? Yeah, yeah. Loud, mm -hmm. aggressive sound, which... You would think so. But I would bet for, <laughs> for it. The majority of the singers that come in with problems, nodes, uh, hemorrhaging, uh, things related to just general swelling and irritation mm -hmm. are from the classical world. Not, the, classical. not AV singers. Not yeah. rock singers, not R&B singers, not country singers, classical singers. Be how could classical teaching per, uh, always... You would think. Yeah. <laughs> The point is this, you know, yeah. the sound. Yeah, classical means right in uh, our perception. Exactly. But you can do something that's right in a wrong way and find yourself getting hurt. Um, mm. What causes problems in the voice isn't often a matter of how the voice sounds. It's not the sounds that create problems. It's what we refer to as <clears throat> uncontrolled constrictions. So uncontrolled constrictions can happen in any style, working with any dynamic. I mean, John Mayer certainly doesn't sing loud. Doesn't. But with uncontrolled constrictions and with irregular vibratory patterns by having excessive air, boom, he's got nodes. But his, uh, uh, his sounds like a healthy sound in, mm. in mm, regular ear. Like when, I'm saying, you don't go by sounds. You don't go by sounds. You don't judge the health of a voice by how it sounds. It's more about like what's going on in terms of Inside? the constrictions. Uh, in terms of so uncontrolled constrictions is what creates these problems. So distortion can be learned and any sound can be learned in a way where you can approach it in a healthy way. So what singers need to do, uh, they need to find the teachers that have the skills to show them how to approach any of these sounds in a way where they don't hurt themselves. Great. So there's problems with constriction, there's problems where there's an imbalance in the support, perhaps, you know, excessive tension. Uh, if the settings are off point for a certain kind of a dynamic, then of course when the voice goes out of whack and the ir irregular vibratory patterns take place, then you're going to find yourself getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. You have anything to add to that? Can no, we, can't no, that either? no, you are. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> so um, my thought is that when you hear <clears throat> about distortion being a danger, uh, when you hear people suggest that you don't do it because you're going to hurt yourself, yes. it's because they don't know how to do it. They just don't know. They don't know how, and when they try, they find that there's some irritation, they sense something some being irregular. Being. And so because they don't know how to do it, then if they're instructing you and you want to do it, sometimes people just assume that it can't be done. And when we hear it out in the pop world, mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just figuring these are freaks of nature that can do things that most of us cannot. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of like the exceptions to this assumed rule, mm -hmm. which says never use distortion. Yeah. Like for every rule, there's always an exception. Yeah. And so those singers are the exception. And that's, that's pretty much how they sum it up. That's, uh, yeah. that's or you have it or not. Yeah, yeah that's incorrect. And I think what it is is people are just uneducated and because they assume that they've learned everything and know everything, uh, it must be that uh, folks are doing things where they're just freaks of nature and they've got something that most people can't uh, ever expect to do or eventually they're going to ruin their voices. And there have been instances where people using these sounds have lost their voices mm -hmm. and it's because they didn't know how to do it correctly. And so all you need are a couple of examples. All a coach or, an, or a specialist needs is one example that they can point to. Oops, he lost his voice using distortion. And then blame Oops, it. oops, he, oh, so it must mean, and that's all they need is like just a couple of instances where they can say, see? Yeah. And then that sort of supports their point of view. And there's ideas, yes? Yeah, but it's not true. Yes, he knows. Uh, better about distortion because he just uses it a lot. I guess I, I don't a use lot. it much in my style, so I don't have anything. Well, to I, add I grew to up that. using it. You know, yeah. when I was a kid growing up, I, and I was. And when, really and when, 
when we listen to Metallica, it's a f for 40 years since yeah. 80s and James Hetfield sing it, and, and this year he sings pretty much uh, awesome. Yeah. He's doing the same thing. You can say that about a lot of singers. You know, there's you know James Brown. He was he worked it all the way up until he died. Uh, you know, Gladys Knight uses all kinds of effects. Uh, Stevie Wonder growls and uses. You know, they all. There, there's been so many people who've made careers of what uh, is going on mm -hmm. with, with effects. And yeah, James. Uh, you know, he and so many rock singers are and R&B singers. So that's a way to know that. Well, perhaps maybe that assumption has some flaws. Because how is it that all these people are doing it for decades and they don't have voice problems? Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Yes, yes. It's very interesting. And uh, the next question, uh, mainly from voice teachers of Russia, how, in your perception, how do you think, should we, people who want to sing, sing scales maybe a half, hour or hour a day just scales la 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 ma 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 is this the way to success and some or not and uh, if not where do you think uh, where may the problem is some i know many singers that every day sing these scales hour and they don't have really success don't have really progress in their voices mm -hmm. and so i start to think <coughs> is it really necessary thing for every singer or not and if if we have possibility to ask such a master so it's the second question that comes to mind do we really need these scales how do you think what do you think uh, uh, i mean, I mean um, I, I do think, I mean, that's, do we really need exercises or do we really need scales? Scales, they're always good to sing because you need to know the scales because the music is based on scales. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know what the minor, it's good to know the major, it's good and to know intervals. the pentatonics, you know, it's good to know, you know, all the, all the that, that major modes which we use in music because we sing all the melodies, we sing all the harmonies mm -hmm. and all this music, all these harmonies, melodies, they based on a certain scales. Uh, and I do believe if you want to improvise, if you want to do some kind of phrasing, and if you want to know what you're doing, you must need the scales. Some kind of uh, like running, maybe. If I want to run, I yeah. should run yeah, to yeah. exercise myself. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's important. But uh, to do it every day, like in a daily basis. Yes. Uh, I believe you if you have if you have passion of that and if you want to do that just go for no, it. It's not necessary a thing uh, necessary ritual you know, maybe. You know what I want to say today we had we had uh, some people who don't know about scales nothing but they still could sing. Yes. So And you know, it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> so it means for them probably of they may learn them and it will be helpful for them and they will improve. But, you know, you still can sing if you don't know that. You still can enjoy and have fun of music. Just, you know, bring your passion. And I'm sure a lot of singers, they don't know scales and they don't practice with them every day. But that would be helpful. I mean, that's my, um, that's my, um, I, I might think about that. But what, what do you think, Russ, about that? Well, I think, um, I think scales are important. Um, and you have to kind of consider, well, what is it that you're trying to achieve with the voice? Scales, to me, are mu that's a musical uh, concern. Um, in other words, it, in a way, scales, like, sh like, like Katharina was saying, every melody that you're going to sing is derived from some scale. Although the harmony that one might uh, find themselves having to perform with a group comes from the notes, right? The harmonic notes, mm -hmm. the chordal, you know, notes that are derived from the scale. So the scale is kind of like this template that we use as a way to write our melodies, to sing our melodies, and also to come up with what we need when we're singing harmonically. So if you're trying to enhance your musicality, like, you know, like develop your ear, 
uh, it's not necessary uh, to sing in overdrive or to have to work with more edge or that's not necessary. What you're really doing is you're developing your, your capacity to listen. So that's one concern over here because music is a language. Mm -hmm. But to develop your voice, to work with different dynamics, to find how the voice can stay safe when you're working with different uh, ranges of the voice, different dynamics, when you want to start using you know, effects, yeah. that's a different you know, bailiwick. That's, an, that's another pot that you have to mm -hmm. uh, concern yourself with. Uh, there's a lot of s musicians and singers that have a great ear, but they may not have a easy time dealing with different dynamics or they might have a limitation in terms of range. So in a way, if you really want to go for it and kind of be really educated, I would say learn scales to develop your musicality. We had a guy in the class today mm -hmm. who was singing a melody uh, from a song that we were helping him with technique but then, of course, he had to hit the notes of the melody that we were helping him with. Mm -hmm. Now, he had a hard time hearing the notes. Now, if his ear was a little bit more acute, if he had heard the melody and from hearing it could easily see that, oh, that's a minor chord being arpeggiated, then boom, he would have had a much easier time discerning which notes to hit. Mm -hmm. So that's when the ear is educated to know like where to go. Now, we were working on technique, you know, how do you sing the upper range with, a, with, with the falsetto, mm -hmm. with neutral, and then hit the lower note where there's a little bit more density and you're going into medium um, overdrive. So that's one concern. So he needed to learn that, but then he had to kind of also learn like what notes to hit. <laughs> now, if he had studied Scales. the minor scale yeah. and had studied the arpeggiated chord, he wouldn't have had a problem with that. So you see what I mean? Yeah. So in order to develop your ear, it's kind of like learning the alphabet and knowing how to put words together in sentences. That's mm -hmm. what scales and chords do. But in order to get your voice strong, to have the ability to move through the range, and now a lot of times, most times what's happening is people are developing their ear and they're actually learning the scales. They're hearing the harmonies. It's just that they can't really give a name to what they're doing. But it's not like they're not studying. Uh, I've worked with a lot of guys who've had no formal education at all with skills. They've just played a lot of music, they've learned a lot of chord progressions, and so in a way they understand the theory in their own way. In your See what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. then they can play all the music, but I had this one guy where I wanted him to play an 11 chord. I was rehearsing uh, this young lady and I had a rhythm section supporting her. The guitar player has toured with everybody like a real in-demand musician side mm -hmm. man. I hired him and I said, look man, I play an 11 chord on the turnaround. And he said, play it for me. I said, cool, boom. And he said, oh, oh, you mean the, you, you mean the, uh, the Marvin Gaye chord. <laughs> because on the What's Going On album, Marvin Gaye's playing a whole lot of 11 <laughs> chords through a lot of those songs. So that's how he learned it. So he learned it, but he, codified it in his own way. Mm -hmm. So he had the ears, it's just that um, if I said sing a minor scale, he'd say, uh, well mm -hmm. just, and then he would, he would recognize it right away. Mm -hmm. I've had producers that have worked on records that have hits. I remember this one guy, he tracked all the parts, played all the keyboard parts, played the bass, played the guitar part. He worked for Nardo Michael Walden. Okay. Yeah, this guy, you know, uh, worked under Nardo who produced Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, he's worked with Mariah Carey, major producer in, mm -hmm. in, in the States. And so I, I'm, I'm a coach, I work with a lot of the singers that roll through there. And so Narda wanted me to work with uh, this artist from Greece that was there. And he had one of his lieutenants put the tracks together, played every part, every instrument. So Narda says, come up with some harmonies. Work with zone and work with some harmony parts. I go in there and this guy did all the parts, produced the whole record. So I go over to the keyboard because I'm thinking about, okay, what harmony parts am I going to come up with? So I ask Zone, Zone, uh, what key is this song in? He says, I don't know. <laughs> I said, you don't know? I said, you, you, you played all the parts on this record. I mean, and the track was smoking. I mean, it was a badass track. He says, oh, oh yeah, I played everything on there. He says, look, Raz, I can't even tell you what the names on the keyboard are. No, I didn't give a, he didn't care about any of that. It's like, what can you do and how can you hear? 
because he could hear everything. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting at, <laughs> you want to develop your ear in some kind of a way. And scales certainly give you a way inside sort of like the literature. It gets mm -hmm. you inside the alphabet. Yep. But, yeah. but what I'm saying is, but if you want to condition your voice like an athlete so that you can sing in different dynamics, keep notes organized, really have a dynamic control, not have your voice get away from you, protect your voice in a way where you're not going to hurt yourself, you're going to have to do something more than just scales. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I know people that do scales in neutral all day long and they yeah, sound yeah, yeah, great, yeah, yeah. but then you, now you've got to sing a tune where there's different dynamics. Oops. And maybe some yeah. com and they, consonants. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so this is where techniques, what we're doing with CVT and other you know, systems of music, other mm -hmm. systems of vocal technique, they provide those tools. So yeah, you know what I mean? So to just sing scales and think that only doing that yeah. will be a way into being a great singer? No. 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 On the other hand, just learning how to sing in all the modes mm -hmm. and no musicality? No. Mm -hmm. You have to have a musical ear. Yeah. So in some way, you got to get that musicality on your voice. So we need not mm -hmm. one Why or not? another, we need one and two. We need them all. Yeah, we yeah. need and to even come. more probably. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of stuff we can learn. <laughs> and like I say, a lot of singers just imitate singers and that's their way inside the terrain, inside that territory. Because they're learning it even though they can't give it a name. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, uh, we in Russia we <laughs> very much want to know how do the CVT teachers live without head voice, chest voice and mixed voice concept because in Russia it's it's huge part of vocal education and many of my friends uh, just uh, uh, just don't know how could it possible to sing and to teach singing without head voice, yes, for example? Yes, terms, yeah, yes. Like head voice, chest voice. And uh, in, in master classes today, mm -hmm. so we, we don't use these terms, yes? We don't, we don't uh, yeah. yeah, but all works. <coughs> and that has a very good explanation that I like Ooh, how you're talking voice? about this. I mean, the, the, the voice, the, our vocal cords, they, we can divide them on like a, uh, registers. Yeah, well, what it is is Catherine Sadwan, right, came up with these modes. And uh, she's approaching voice technique strictly from an anatomical scientific point of view. And so her intention is to try to be as accurate in the language when describing what's going on as best she can. Because she's going at it from a scientific reference. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, uh, you can't sing in your head and you can't sing in your chest and definitely mix, you can't mix the two. Like mm -hmm. you can't mix your head with your chest. I mean, when, you think, when you're thinking about the language, that's not actually what's anatomically going on. So um, what I'm getting at is Catherine goes about it from the standpoint of, well, what's actually happening? Uh, when you're singing a low frequency, low frequencies are low and they're slow, the waveforms are long and they're big. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at a guitar, right? It's shaped like this. And it's shaped like that for a reason. When you strike a low string, that low E, it vibrates. It's a low vibration, it's a slow waveform. Mm -hmm. Now when that vibration goes into the instrument, uh, that note vibrates throughout the whole instrument. But where, it's fi where it finds its most conducive area of the instrument for expression, it's in that low, big part. Because a low frequency that's long and slow needs a big space to have expression. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when you play the high E string, that's a fast moving, quick, quick short waveform. Mm -hmm. Now, although that note goes into the instrument, right, it vibrates more strongly in that little narrow place. Oh. When you play the mid-range strings, and that's why the guitar is designed that way, and then it finds its, its expression in that sort of area that's sort of between the lower, bigger part and the narrow part. So when you're singing, and you're singing a low note, it vibrates and resonates more strongly here. Mm -hmm. Because that part of the instrument of the body is the most broad ploid. So that's why they kind of call it chest voice. Because mm -hmm. it's a low pitch that vibrates here. Mm. But it's not really, that's not really what's going, it resonates there, 
Just like when you sing high notes, they're going to find where they resonate most strongly in those little narrow, thin, you know, concise places. And that's all up in here. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's head voice. But that's not really, that's just where it's resonating. You don't sing in your head, you don't sing in your chest. It resonates there. So the only thing that's going on for different pitches, like when you're moving through the range, mm -hmm. right? Like chest voice means low pitches. Yeah. Mid-range pitches, and yeah. then you have high pitches, right? Now we feel those pitches resonate in different places, but the only thing that's really going on, just like on a guitar, the only thing that's really going on is that the string is vibrating. So the strings for a, for a singer are the vocal cords. They're vibrating. So when they go higher, the vibration's faster. When you go lower, the vibration's slower. And where the, where the frequency finds its home mm -hmm. for the most expressive some most dynamic. Here, some frequency is most Yeah, appear. it's a frequency thing. So to think like you're blending the head to the chest is not really what's going on. So that's why Catherine uses different terminology to talk about the range. In, in their terminology, we in their use terminology. all the frequencies together, yes? Or maybe mm -hmm, uh, some mm -hmm. kind of uh, parts of uh, frequencies. So I have uh, maybe some kind of this, a little bit of here, a little bit of here, and this is my pocket <laughs> of frequencies. I'm not uh, quite sure Just what like this? Yeah. So really what's happening is when people hear different volumes and densities, then they kind of confuse that with chest or head. Yeah, so we think uh, three parts of here, yeah. two parts of here, and uh, some kind of recept, right. uh, recept of frequencies. Yeah. Right. Mixing frequencies which produce by vocal cords. Some, uh, uh, so vocal cords produce uh, frequencies that we call chest voice, and they can produce frequencies that people call head voice, and, okay. and maybe together. Okay, okay, well, the, 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 the vocal, so when the vocal cords are moving slower and the, and the pitch is lower, then you're calling that chest. Yeah. When they move faster, so when they're kind of moving kind of fast, then that's mix, and when they move really fast, that's head. Yeah. That's okay, all right, that's cool. All right, cool. <laughs> but, see, I, but see, the thing is, is you're not mixing head and chest. Of the vocal cords are just the vibratory pattern is just changing, mm -hmm. so it has nothing to do with chest or head. Yeah. It's just a it's pattern a of speed. vibration. Yes, of the vibratory vocal pattern cords. as to how fast they yeah, vibe, yeah. and then also the adduction, like the closure phase of the yeah, vibratory yeah, yeah, pattern yeah, yeah. in the open. That's what's it's changing. Change uh, some kind of gears, maybe yes. yes. In car, we have first gear, second gear, mm -hmm. and some gears for for work of vocal cords, yes? It yeah, but it has nothing to do with chest or head. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, types of uh, working, types of working of vocal cords. Yeah, types of yeah, yeah, so it's just another way of thinking about it. I mean, you can think, but when you're looking at it anatomically, it has nothing to do with chest or head. Yeah. It's what's going on at the vocal cord level. Like, uh, what's the adduction? Is the longer closure phase, is there a longer closure phase over an open? Or is it equal? Uh, how fast are they moving? Mm -hmm. That's where all of that stuff's coming from. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with chest or head. It's so it's like incorrect language. Yeah. Because th it's not that. It's, it's just that when, they, when the vibratory pattern has a certain character, it'll feel like it's in the chest. Yeah, but it, it's a different metaphor, yes? Mm -hmm. Metaphorical. Uh, yeah, kind of. it's a metaphor, but it's not actually what's happening. Actually, vocal cords have one way to work, or another way to work, or maybe another way to work, and mm -hmm. uh, this produce different sounds. Yeah, yes. you can call it chest mix or head, but you're not mixing your head with your chest. That's not what you're literally doing mm -hmm. to get the sound. Yes. That's all I'm saying. It's not, it's sort of, it might be a metaphor, but why use a metaphor when you can just talk about what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just, just, tell, just tell us what, what's going on. Yeah. And because a lot of people get confused. And it's a lot of people think that, okay, I'm going to pull chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very and common. Then, and you can't do that. And then they, just and then they wonder, like, how they can make it. <laughs> and, yes, and yes, yes. You can't it's pull chest. Because 
That's not what's going on anyway. It's sort of a misconception. Yeah. So you got people working with a concept that's erroneous mm -hmm. from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So people use this concept when they don't actually know what's going on. What, and what is happening yes. exactly. Yeah, I think it's better to just tell people what's actually happening yeah. and then work from, the pr work from a real anatomical point of view. And when you do so, you don't need these metaphors, yes? Yeah. And no. You just don't need it. In fact, they, become, <laughs> they can, can become kind of confusing. Yes, uh, yes, it's, it's a reason <coughs> of many confusions because, uh, because of it. Some kind, uh, pull head to chest, pull chest up. Yeah, uh, it's like you're, and they're, they're and literally trying to pull their chest. Mm -hmm. You can't do it because it's not how it's done. It's like it's looking at it from an incorrect point of view. It's like uh, looking at me and saying that uh, I'm three years old and I come from Russia, <laughs> and that's how you're going to like treat me. You're going to act toward me with that concept of how you perceive me. Uh, you're, we're going to have a difficult time yes, waiting around because yes, yes. that's not who I am. That's you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's it's just not what's happening. You can't mix your head and your chest. And people and we've had so many people coming in with problems, moving through the range, because this is how they're thinking. Yeah. It's like whoa whoa blow that off. Look, let's look at what's actually happening. Oh my God, really? Yeah yeah. And then they can do it because they're addressing it from the point of view that is actually the case. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's all. It's just, it's just another way of conceptualizing it, which mm -hmm. I find more, um, uh, more appealing because it's, it's, it, it's, it's like, you know, that's what's going on. That's what's actually happening in there. I'm not going to try to pull my chest or mix my head with my chest. So, uh, so <laughs> I think we should add that we can find more information in CVT research sites, yeah. yes? Yeah. Which links will be below this video. And uh, мы все сможем посмотреть научные исследования CVT, они открыты, и ссылки будут прикреплены, чтобы мы могли более глубоко, наверное, этот вопрос, если будет интересно, изучить. So, um, very interesting subject is how one people, one singer can combine in their one voice so different modes and so so many possibilities and uh, it's uh, kind of confusing how one voice can produce a softer sound and then after s go straight to heavy sounds and different directions and uh, uh, what do you think about it? And uh, well, different, you know, uh, I think we all can have all can have different emotions. Yeah, we can cry, we can uh, feel sorry about something, we can sob, we can uh, sing a lullaby and yes, 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 to speak, you know, quietly and intimate with with a person. We can be angry when we can yell, you know, we can we can be like, you know disappointed for something but and it's all emotions that all the modes what we're talking about that's you know we have them already already in our voice so we use them actually on a daily basis while speaking and uh, when people try and uh, when people try to learn how to sing <coughs> they actually it's very often they looking for the one way that voice should be used the one singing way, it's not speech, it's not uh, sob, it's not laugh, it's not cry, just for singing. And I think often people look for this, the one principle, the one mechanics for voice to sing. And it's singing, it's not singing, it's shouting, and, and it's kind of confused. You know, but uh, for some people probably, but singing, that's, as you said, Raz, it's about communication. Even though you, even now, you speak with us and you change your intonation yes, yes. every time. So how can we sing like a robot? How can we sing without any emotions? That's Do not re possible. Mi fa sol e si. If kind of this. Yeah, but that's that's not what you're going to do on stage, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so when you go on stage, when you sing from all your heart, you know, you sing with all your emotions, what you have, you know, no, nobody will listen to you if you will be singing like this all the time, yeah? yeah? So you need expression, and all the smalls, you use them, so they're inside you. 
You know, it's just a matter of learning them to you to to use them in a healthy way, and this is what CVT teaches us. I mean, great. Yeah, um, Ras probably will have some to add because I mean that's that's my point of view. Mm, I'm uh, I'm trying to get more of a angle on your question. Are you saying that some people just want to find one way to sing? Yes, uh, and, and not and sort of I I sort of alienate the others. Like yeah, this is the one way to sing. I I see that often people try to find one way to organize vocal tract mm -hmm. for singing purposes, mm -hmm. and if it's so. Uh, that's right, that's cool, that's classic, that's healthy, often, t often it calls this. And if uh, we use another sounds like uh, air, glottal attack, maybe uh, loud volume, so it's unhealthy, it's bad, it's shouting and it's not singing. And I see often people afraid of it, afraid of uh, sounds mm -hmm. that voice can produce. Yeah. And, and that is why I want to uh, ask this question, because uh, I think that maybe people should not, should not be so afraid of, okay. of, of possibilities of the voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, often in classical teaching, there's uh, some kind of classical sounds which on pedestal and uh, people go to uh, the right classical sound. And they ignore all other directions and right so what you're talking about is bias so in other words some people have decided that this is how you sing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this is what singing is and they might subscribe to a range of different ways a, a classical person might think this is how you sing in a classical way and if you're With doing anything else it's not tone, legitimate yes, yes. or a jazz singer oh man if you can't swing and if you can't sing you know uh, you know uh, 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 a diminished scale, then you know you're not a singer. Or if you don't know this kind of repertoire, then you haven't really learned how to sing. You mean you don't know like a change is going to come, and you call yourself a singer? You're not a singer. You should know that repertoire and a whole lot of other tunes. So yeah. you're right. People have their own biases about what they think singing is. So if you're coming at it with that kind of a of a of a um, of a way of thinking, then yeah, you're kind of, that might be enough for some people. That might be all they want. You know, it comes down to taste. Uh, the way I look at CVT and expression and uh, singing where you're communicating, I kind of see that as a way to sing. That's a way to sing, where what you're doing is embracing all the possibilities. Yeah. So that can be a, like another bias, if you want to call it that. That's yeah. my bias. <laughs> my bias is like, why not be inclusive and bring everything in, mm -hmm. regardless of style. Mm -hmm. Some people have a different bias. Well, just classical, that's yeah, it, nothing yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody's got to make a choice about how they're going to decide, uh, how they're going to define great singing. And, uh, you know, so we come up against that, you know, and when people have adhered to a bias, well, classical is it, and yeah, and that's probably why a glottal attack isn't really safe or, or, or desirable because, well, first of all, that kind of a sound isn't considered appropriate in a classical genre. Mm -hmm. So you would never do it. Or like twang, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be something you wouldn't do because the style has certain parameters and rules which define that style. So if you're really adhering to that concept of singing, then yeah, everything else is not going to be embraced. So that's a bias. My bias is uh, I want to embrace everything because it's possible to embrace everything. And part of it is that I think every way of singing is legitimate. It's not that if I'm going to sing like a pygmy in the Congo, you know, that's, that, that's a way of singing. Now, you know, somebody, you know, at La Scala might think, that ain't singing. You know, if you're not doing, you know, classical, then you're not singing. Yeah. Well, you know, that's your opinion. You're and in. we have a lot of people that come to people like me and uh, Katrina who've been in a certain way of thinking and they would think that we're, is, is maybe something more possible. Uh, we were told that it isn't. But then they kind of, somebody's out there saying, but it could be possible. And so they go, well, and they check it out. And then they realize, oh my God, I've been sitting in this sort of Cage. sequestered in this little ghetto of thinking what singing is. Mm -hmm. And so you can free people up so that you open their minds to be a little bit more accepting of a wide range of possibilities. So, you know, it's, it's about taste and bias as to like why you see these little, cool. uh, little yeah. uh, compartments. But uh, my view is that it's all legitimate. 
So that's my bias. Yeah. And it's cool. your choice. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Tell me your choice. Yes. Um, so maybe you can tell us about future master classes. Maybe are you planning something else for for next year? Maybe. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Um, of course we do. And uh, the first of all, that's not the first one what we did, and uh, we both. Uh, uh, um, we both with RAS, uh, we do love CVT and we do use CVT in our teaching. And uh, as for me, uh, that's already like the fourth masterclass what I'm presenting in Russia uh, regarding the CVT, te uh, the, this vocal technique. And I'm so happy to have Russ Kennedy with us this workshop because that was my dream. When I met Russ, uh, like many years ago, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, ev I, even, I even didn't think about it, what it, it's going to happen. And Raz, he, introduces me, he introduced me to this method, uh, which I really love and appreciate because, you know, we, we talked about it. And uh, yeah, and when, you know, when he agreed to do this workshop, I was extremely happy. And yeah, that's an honor for me to have you here. And he loved St. Petersburg, he loves mm -hmm. this city. And I love her. he wants to come back, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and of course he will come back. So we, we, we are planning some workshops and we're planning some master classes. There will cool. be uh, probably a workshop in January where I'm going to bring some um, some of my colleagues, students, classmates from Complete Vocal Technique. We'll do some study groups in Russia probably in January and they will probably teach some uh, workshops as well but with RAS that will be the real great thing and real huge thing huge, huge thing, thing and RAS will tell us about this will yeah would yeah you yeah yeah we plan yeah. to do a um, a, th a two day I guess right a two yeah. day vocal intensive maybe a three day uh -huh. here in uh, St. Petersburg uh, where we're not only going to invite um, well, we want to invite a range of different types of vocal coaches from different disciplines to give the St. Petersburg singing community a way to really have access to a range of different ways of using the voice. You know, CVTs out there, there's somatic, there's SLS, there's Joe Estel, and then there's different styles of singing. Mm -hmm. We want to bring in people that have a, special, um, a, special, a specialty in rock, uh, jazz, world music, you know, uh, country. Um, so we really want to bring a symposium together where we can do a, a, a cross genre styles, uh, styles and, a, and a cross references of different techniques so that the people can really see all of these different approaches. They can uh, access and have access to all of these biases. Yes, and, and, and then that yes. way people can kind of choose for themselves what works for them. Yeah. And then we are planning to do the very same thing in the States, in San Francisco, and in Los Angeles, hopefully Los Angeles, but it's definitely happening in, 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 um, in San Francisco. We're going to do the same three-day thing there, and there it's going to be quite cool because it's going to be an intercontinental symposium where we're bringing people from the States, interfacing with people from Europe. So we'll bring people from, you know, Katharina here, she's a Russian native, and then folks from Scandinavia, Germany, and then they're going to interface with folks from out of LA and Los Angeles. And then again, we'll have this sort of cross-cultural thing of different coaches from different disciplines again, and also different styles. And we'll be doing that in San Francisco, and the idea would be to also do it in Los Angeles. Then after that, we will be doing the same kind of a thing in Germany in mm -hmm. October. Mm -hmm. So in October of next year, uh, we have a colleague there. He's also a CVT uh, authorized teacher. And he and I have been uh, collaborating. I did something for him uh, about a year ago. And so we're all getting together again, and we're going to do the same thing in Germany. So that's the year is looking like a real festive time for us Easy. to be, you know, interfacing with all kinds of people and just create community, you know, and make so that we all can yeah. learn from one another. It, it'll be a ra real great way to network. So that's our plans for next year. Hopefully it'll all happen. You know, there's a lot going on with trying to pull yeah. that all yeah. off. But uh, that's the intention, and I have a good feeling that we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Great. Because we, we really want to help singers to have their own choice what they want to do to get all the knowledge 
what you need to yeah to succeed to succeed it's really that's really important mind-blowing for the today since so many new thoughts and uh, for me I don't expect so mind-blowing experience to uh, for for this master class I have my world up and down changed uh, yeah and <laughs> I I don't expect that in master class formats can be done so so <laughs> so huge things and uh, maybe you can uh, share with us your feelings how how this today's was for you how it well i mean katharina to bring this together uh, the work to organize it and then to attract such a cross section of different singers different ages different styles i was blown away by that uh, capacity for her to pull something like that off and then uh, listening to you today sing was mind-blowing i mean you, i mean uh, <laughs> That was one of the highlights for me, hearing you move into you know full edge like that and just killing it on that. Uh, I don't expect that Alice that in Chains. <laughs> that, that was really <laughs> fantastic to listen to, and uh, so my impression was that it was great to see how people just unfolded and, and sort of opened up, and uh, and there were so many breakthroughs for folks with again just being shown ways that I think have that you know the efficacy of the technique and how we approach it really is um, um, it's real it works and that was I think what fascinated everyone is that oh wow this stuff actually is effective and it's great because then you can give people a way to see it's possible we like to encourage people we want to empower people and that's what I felt we accomplished today and I learned a lot just by listening to others and watching her work listening to how people opened up it was a great way for me to grow as as an instructor to be in a in an environment like this so i thought today was super successful you know i, I think we accomplished what we had set out to do uh, sometimes i just wish there was more time because uh, I, i'm feeling sad to have to leave tomorrow and uh, so because it was rewarding on a lot of levels so that was that's my impression but you will come back. And uh, I'm really <laughs> impressed with, uh, with Katharina, how she has been so instrumental in giving people access to opening up their voices, making dreams come true. And because people love to sing, it's again, like she was saying, it's a communicative function. So when you're singing, you're actually connecting with others and you're creating community, you know? Yeah. And that's what we need more of in a world such as ours these days. So I think we're kind of working towards something to make everyone feel more together and less dispersed and divided. That's great. I mean, here I am. I'm here all the way out from California. She's from here and she's traveled to New York and has been to Scandinavia and has been in California. So the world is getting really tiny. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, of course, um, my fiance Jessica, is another sort of piece in the puzzle. She's been instrumental in helping out with what we're going to do in San Francisco, and she's a speech pathologist. She's from Scandinavia, you know, she's actually from Holland, but lives in Sweden. So there's that whole connect. We're going to be doing work there. And then she's also on board with what we're doing here next summer, as well as what we're doing in Germany. So there's all of these people and uh, all this diversity that's finding unity. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I think today was all about, which is what I, I want to see more of that in the world. I'm just glad that she brought me in to participate in that effort, because that's what I want to spend time doing. Otherwise, what's, what's the point? You know, so I really i am I'm grateful that I was here and to meet you too i mean you're a beautiful soul just as anton uh, her manager uh, helped she helped he helps organize uh, it we couldn't have worked out for us to do this today if it wasn't for him yeah he's super instrumental in just all of the structural infrastructure stuff so this team effort thing is really cool you know people come together and takes a village as they say to make something rock yeah that's that's really great yeah. Thank you very much for Thank you. for education for 
time and for your delivery and attitude it's uh, it's really for me it's unique and i sure that for mainly for r russian singers it's unique to some rhythmics uh, and that's huge it's great <laughs> Thank you for coming and Thank for you. educating us. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. And thanks for this interview. Yeah, spread, you're helping us spread the word. It's really, uh, uh, we're grateful for that. Thank you for inviting us. You can easily find all links below this video. Russ Kennedy, Katerina Brown, two sites of Complete Vocal Institute, research site and general. There you will find details on the topics that we talked about today. Video recordings inside the vocal tract. A lot of information about the voice and how it's function. If you are interested, pay attention on this site. Also in Russia there will be official authorized CVT coaches. All their social media links below this video. If you're interested about future events and seminars, you can follow it. I would like to say thanks to whole team, to all the people who helped us, to all the people who made this masterclass with me. Anton Ismagilov, vocal coach. Of course, Jam School, the school we are in and which presented this wonderful room. To Russ Kennedy for the fact that he came and supported and conducted such a chic masterclass. To his girlfriend Jessica, who came and supported. And to you, Vanya, thank you for interview. Thank you, thank you all. For sure we will come back and we'll repeat this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Goodbye. Wow. Good. Great. Great. You're awesome, man. You're awesome. Oh, that was great. I, um, <coughs> for uh, can we take a picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, oh. by all means. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Yeah, I keep, I've hit that twice. <laughs> no, wait. Let's move that. <laughs> I'm scared of that thing. Yeah, super. Right. Super. super! Just for memory. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> well, let me get one, too. <laughs> Put it on Instagram. <laughs> Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Oh, Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you, man. Thanks for taking the time. I wasn't expecting that. So it's a really unexpected surprise. Thank cool. you. Yeah. I hope to get together again. Do you have a card or anything? Uh, an email address or something? Why don't you put your stuff in here for me?